So we're back from SharePoint Conference in Las Vegas, SharePoint Conference 2019 or SPC 19. And welcome back. Is it good to be back in the home office? It is. Thanks, Christian. Uh, back here in Ontario, Canada, uh, just recapping from lots of information from the conference last week. I know there were a number of things. I mean, just in Jeff Teeper's keynote uh, you know, itself, where he went through and summarized, and of course, you had the virtual summit, kind of all of the other announcements out there. And I believe there were 10 different Microsoft generated blog posts, you know, cataloging all of the announcements. So a lot to, to go, but, but kind of what was your focus? What were you watching for? What, what did you, what were your takeaways from the Teeper keynote? I really like how Jeff organized the keynote. He put it around an intelligent workplace concept and he's got three main pillars to that. So there's teamwork and business process, employee engagement and communications and search and content and intelligence. And there's a ton of stuff in each of those topics. You know, Jeff, kind of touched on them and then throughout the conference there was lots of Microsoft folks there that went deeper on each of those topics. So the way that Jeff focuses on the intelligent workplace. So it's not a new phrase. It's it's a you know we I think ignite even two ignites back where it was really kind of introduced and what that actually means. That it's not just about it's a new branding for uh, the desktop applications, new applications, new services that are being offered but is how they're working together. It, it has this implied AI capability, this ability to read information intelligently, then take, an act, you know, take action or enable teams to take action. So what were your takeaways from that, the pillars underneath Intelligent Workplace? Well, why don't we dive into the first one, which is teamwork and business process. And, and that word teams gets used in a lot of ways. And obviously Microsoft Teams is is and has been a very big focus for Microsoft. It's been doing incredibly well for them. Uh, we're excited coming more from the SharePoint space to see the full fidelity, you know, list and library support coming in Teams. We first heard about that uh, back last Ignite and they reinforced that. It's not there yet, but it's definitely coming. Um, there's, there's also a lot of other things around the business process. There's some, some great architecture in, innovations. Jeff went into the next gen storage frameworks, things that they're doing around incremental file open, differential saving, you know, for large files and incre increasing the performance. Lots of great things from that point of view as well. So I know that there were also some announcements around external sharing, which is critical to your company. Yes, it's, it's very near and dear to my heart. And, and Jeff shared actually a cool one during the keynote itself, which was around request for files. So in the past, you've been able to share files that you generated out with external people. But what if you want files from those people? You can actually generate a link which is a black box. People can drop files into there. They can't see what other people are dropping in and you can collect files, whether that's for bids, tenders, uh, reviews, anything confidential from that point of view works really well there. There's a ton more features there. In fact, I'm going to do a post exclusively on uh, what Stephen Rice announced from a external sharing point of view. And that's a topic onto itself. Well, I know that you have the employee engagement, the experience, I mean, all of the capabilities where you think of, I mean, teams really fit solidly within that, that space. But there's a lot of just incremental improvements that are happening, uh, a, a lot of announcements around that. Kind of what are the takeaways for you? Uh, one of the things Jeff shared was a, uh, a new experience video for SharePoint. So this is a great resource, uh, share with your comms team, anybody who's focused on employee communications, really shows the art of possible from that point of view. It takes the SharePoint lookbook that we saw last fall to a whole new level. Uh, probably the big announcement, though, was around SharePoint home sites. We've had communication sites, team sites, and we're adding home sites to the mix, which is really about personalized news and content and building that uh, home for your employees and for communication within your Office 365 environment. So in the third pillar, so search and content, I know that is something that there's, again, there's just a lot of incremental improvements that have been happening there. I mean, what are, what are your takeaways there from Teepers? Well, the big thing we heard last fall was Microsoft Search and this idea of a unified search experience. And it was still early days. We were starting to see that. Uh, that's actually gone to general availability. So now when you go to SharePoint, to office.com, to Bing, you see a unified search experience across that. Later this year, we're going to see that in Windows 10. We're going to see it in the Office apps. So providing that consistent experience and that really rich um, AI-driven experience across all of the Microsoft devices and apps is pretty exciting. And that's something where we're really starting to see the benefit of the expansion of the Microsoft graph. And so as all of these different services and products start uh, you know, being able to surface all of their data and all of that activity, that usage data through these applications, we're going to see even more and more intelligence through uh, Microsoft 365 as a whole. 
Absolutely. I mean, the graph is continuing to harvest more and more, uh, but also they've announced graph API search support. So if you want to start building your own application functionality on top of search, the hooks are there for that as well. So you think about that again, having a, a picture of your entire, uh, your, as a user, your end to end experience, which might include, uh, you know, being able to surface data that is coming through your LinkedIn profile, as well as your access to all the applications, as well as everything that's on your desktop and getting back these relevant uh, search results, looking across all those things. I mean, that's, that's really kind of the, that vision that we've been looking for for a number of, of years, but we're finally getting to that point. It's pretty exciting. It, it is. And even things like Teams and Yammer that have been left out of some of the mainstream search to date, you know, they're being included in the Microsoft search as well. So you really have a one-stop shop from that perspective. I think what's cool, though, is, is what's coming on the horizon in terms of the AI and the machine learning side of things. Um, Naomi actually gave a great uh, segue as, as part of Jeff's talk talking about machine teaching, which is a, a term I hadn't actually heard before. And it makes sense though, is as you're building these models, I mean, how do you coach and build the models without being a data scientist? And, and machine teaching is about democratizing that and saying, okay, how do we allow business users to, to build their models and then leverage them from an ML and AI point of view? That's an important point because so much of what's being shared now, I mean, I know that traditionally, I mean, SharePoint started off as very much a dev and IT pro set focused technology and now you have most of what's being put out there that there are multiple ways to get in there still of course there are the the ability to go in there and to uh, to manage to and um, uh, be able to build customized experiences uh, as a dev or as an IT pro but so much is you're able to do out of the box as an end user as a business user to be able to go in there and create uh, business processes, workflows, uh, to be able to do some degree of automation, even build simple integrations in without having to go to your IT team, but be able to very quickly spin up and, and build things. And so having better access to data, to the statistics uh, of all of these applications, all these systems out of the box, me as an end user, I can then go and build simple kind of if this, then that, you know, uh, integrations or, or capabilities, tools and, and workflows that allow me to be productive without impacting the productivity of others, like the IT team, which has got their heads down working on the next big project. Yeah, absolutely, the whole power platform, flow, power apps, I mean, it's pretty cool what a power user can do with that without re re requiring IT as part of that. The phrase that you use of democratizing data, democratizing information, that's what's happening here with so many of these, these uh, announcements around intelligent workplace. Absolutely. Peter, uh, yeah, I, thanks a lot for your time. I think that's a great uh, summary. I know we're going to be talking about, a lot about each of these topics and be sharing the links in the associated blog post. Awesome. Thanks, Kristen.